Hello, everyone. I'm Becca, dietitian by trade, mom 24-7, wife from the start, and when there's a few extra hours in the day, you might find me hitting the trails or on horseback. And I'm Kara, a therapist to women, a mom to a boy, an entrepreneur, mountain junkie, and a postpartum runner. And this is Fit for a Queen, a podcast that's devoted to the female athlete wanting to balance the teeter-totter of all the things we desire out of life as women. Performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self, even if we only get one minute out of the day. We're so excited to be bringing you the queens in the athletic world who have done just that. Okay, ladies, take a seat at your thrones, grab your crowns, and welcome to fit for a queen. Welcome back, queens. We have quite a powerhouse that we're going to be interviewing today. Her name is Cecilia Town. After graduating from UCLA School of Law, Cecilia began to reflect on her experience as a tennis student athlete at Howard University and took a critical look at how women in sport industry were being portrayed. She realized that more could be done to help prepare student athletes for life after college sports and improve the position of in conversation around women in sports. So, so important. With those ideas in mind, Cecilia founded Beyond the Game, a company that provides workshops that prepare student athletes for life outside of sports, and Gladiators, an organization dedicated to using content, events, workshops, and mentorship to empower, inspire, and connect women in sports. From career-oriented workshops and events to written and verbal commentary on women playing and working in sports, Cecilia is a leading voice on women's role in male-dominated industry, and Cecilia also continues to practice law where she focuses on employment and labor law and issues of diversity and inclusion. Cecilia has previously written for such outlets such as ESPNW, Sport and Law and Women Talk Sports, and her efforts for gladiators have been highlighted by top outlets such as Bloomberg. Welcome. Thank you very much. I was listening to that. I was like, oh, shoot. (laughs) Well, you should feel that way. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Well, and I know my um, co-host is going to be so disappointed. She's home with a a sick kiddo. But I mean, this is such a topic. Obviously, we have a whole podcast devoted to empowering female athletes. So tell us about how your journey kind of led you to now building your career around that. Yeah, um, I um, started playing sports when I was really young. I mean, I was um, considered a tomboy for sure, so I was always very active. Um, but I started playing tennis probably around five or six years old. Um, ended up getting into soccer and track and field, um, cross country as well. So, you know, sports was just always like an important part of my life it was an important part of who I am who I was at the time um you know I I, um played sports multiple sports all throughout high school and I went to college I actually went on an academic scholarship so I didn't know if I was gonna you know continue to play sports because I technically didn't have to but you know within being on campus the first semester I was just like yeah this is something I um really I I miss and I need in my life and so I tried out for the tennis team at Howard and um you know it ended up being one of the best decisions that I could possibly make um you know I ended up being the team captain and (laughs) having some really wonderful experiences um that you know helped shape my career um, when I was when I went to law school, I, I tried again, <laughs> funny enough, to get away from sports. And I said, you know, I'm going <laughs> to get into um, criminal defense at one point. Another point, I said I was going to be international human rights. And um, I graduated from law school when the market was terrible. It was 2009, so it was right, you know, at the beginning of the recession. So lots of people weren't hiring. Um And it was just tough. So I just got whatever job I could get, which came through my network, uh, my amazing network. um, And it was with D.C. government. But it was during that time um, that I just had the opportunity to say, all right, well, what do you really want your career to look like? Um, You know, do you really want to give up sports completely? And the conclusion I came to was no. Um, I felt that, you know, there was a lot that I could still um, give to the world of sports 
And initially I thought about um, helping to represent ad- athletes. Um, I tried to apply to be in some um, um, athletic departments at colleges and they were not having me. Got a lot of no's there. <laughs> um, I but can I relate. Really knew, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew that I really wanted to help student athletes and so you know if they weren't going to let me work with them directly at their school then I was going to start my own company and provide workshops the workshops that I felt that um, I missed as a student athlete and so I started a company called Beyond the Game and um, we provide life skills workshops Um, they talk about you know personal brand development um, financial literacy, communication, all those things that really um, I think some student athletes unfortunately miss out on because, you know, they aren't in career services like the average student because they're playing sports. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, then I I took a look around and I didn't really, this was about, oh, this is going on probably like 2000, oh, what, no, maybe like 2012, 2013, yeah. And I took a look around and I didn't really like how women in sports were being covered. And so that's how I actually started Gladiators. You know, again, rejection. I pitched myself to some outlets and they were like, who are you? Uh, No, no thanks. So I started Gladiators and we really just started talking about, you know, maybe some lesser known athletes or issues that, um, people aren't aware weren't aware of at the time that women and girls in sports were dealing with and then you know as that grew um I started getting more heavily involved in sports sat on the board of play like a girl started writing for ESPNW and it all started to take shape where I was sort of becoming this expert this connector for women in the sports industry and so now Gladiators isn't just a blog. We've pretty much merged Gladiators um, and um, Beyond the Game so that the workshops we provide are to female student athletes and female athletes and women in the corporate setting in the sports field. Um, We have a mentorship program. Uh, We have events that we host. Um, And then, of course, the blog content. So it's really been sort of this labor of following um, what makes me tick, what I'm passionate about, combining that with my actual skills and just sort of letting everything take shape. You know, when I got the nose, I didn't stop. I, I redirected. Um, and yeah, that's how I got here. <laughs> Love it. That's exactly like I'm going to knock on the door, but if it doesn't open, fine. I'm just going to pave my own way. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Let's build a new door. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm curious, kind of what have you seen? It's so interesting. I feel like in the last five years, like women are finally stepped up on that stage, especially with the the women's soccer movement. But yet what actually is unfolding is like, wow how repressed we've been, Um, especially we just interviewed Dr. Claire Marie Roberts, who has been an advocate for the pregnant athletes that basically brought to surface that they're almost treated like a doping offense. You know, they they lose their money. Um, They have to sell the sport. Like what things have you kind of unfolded as you've done this work? Um, Just that, you know, I would say sexism is real. And it really, um, it plays out in, I would say, every aspect of sports. It it plays out in whether they're going to put us on TV. When they put us on TV, what they want to say about us, what they want us to wear, what they want us to say. Um, It plays out in front offices, who they're hiring, um, what's happening to women who work in the sports industry, you know, on the corporate side, the opportunities they're getting. And, you know, I, I'm one of those people who I can believe it. I don't have to live it to believe that it happens to other people. Right. So I was always an advocate um, for, you know, gender, sex, race, um, sexual orientation, equality. 
And I, although I wouldn't say that I've experienced a ton of um, racism and sexism, I was able to I've always been able to acknowledge that it existed, right? But once I got into sports, you just see, or or this side of sports, I would say, you you see really how prevalent and sort of insidious it is and how it, it's an uphill battle. Um, I was talking to someone not too long ago about the WNBA and, you know, whether or not we were getting enough airtime and you know he just used the argument well no one watch nobody watches women's sports and i'm like well that's a <laughs> that's a false argument for one because they don't put it on tv right. like you can't compare how many people watch the nba with how many people watch the wnba if one your starting point is is that they're not putting us on tv in the first place so it's all of these cyclical arguments that get made about women's sports and women in sports, and they exist because we're starting from a place of, um, you know, sexual gender inequality. Yeah, exactly. I can remember, like, in the Olympics, having to record most of, like, the female-based sports at night because yep. it would be, like, at 2 in the yep. morning and then watching them the yep. next day because they wouldn't be on mainstream TV. Yep, so. yep you're right. <laughs> So how do you think, as female athletes, we can leverage the things that we've learned and then use that in the professional world, which sounds like that's kind of what happened to you, whether you wanted it to or not? Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's actually one of the um, faces of the workshops that we that we do. A lot of student athletes and athletes in general um, are not aware Uh, not overtly aware of the leadership skills, the problem solving skills, the team building skills that we naturally develop simply as a result of playing a sport. You know, whether you're playing an individual sport or a team sport, there, you know, you're constantly juggling and solving problems. You're constantly um, overcoming like mental challenges sort of uh, the, the mental problems, and, and by problems I mean, you know, just um, da- to trying to battle defeat, trying to battle doubt, and doing that while still being able to perform. All of these things, you know, athletes, women are doing on a constant basis to athletes, that, 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 like that's their everyday life, in addition to juggling, you know, the stuff outside of sports. And so... Yeah, our our workshop, one of the things that we really focus on is first establishing like these are all your skills that you might not know that you have. And then we establish, hey, like, I mean, this whole career thing is just like the sport that you're playing, right? You know, mm-hmm. there are goals that you're setting. There are um, personalities that you're going to have to navigate and, um you know, there are going to be obstacles that are going to stand in your way. Sometimes the obstacles are normal obstacles that everybody has to overcome. Sometimes those obstacles are going to be simply because you're a woman, you know. Um, But, yeah, I think the key to helping athletes navigate the non-athletic world is, is really getting them to see that, you know, you have everything it it takes to be successful you just have to unlock it and 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 apply it yeah absolutely what are some of the things that you're you're learning from these student athletes in these workshops like what are certain skills um that we could be more proactive in teaching them well my favorite thing to work with student athletes on and and the thing that i feel like every time i work with somebody on it they're like oh wow is this idea of purpose that, you know, it's so easy for a student athlete, professional athlete to just get bogged down in being the athlete. If they're a student athlete, being an athlete and then getting the school work done. And that naturally becomes such a large part of your identity that when, you know, you're no longer, you no longer have an athlete title, your whole world can get rocked. And so what we really try to help student athletes see is that that's just being an athlete is just a part of who you are, but really your job 
you should be focused on is figuring out what your purpose is on this earth. And when we start walking through the activities, like the ladies, they just light up. They're just, you know, excited about, oh, well, you know, I had no idea that this thing that I really like to do or this thing that I'm really good at can turn into a new focus for me and a career. Right. Yeah. How do you get them to buy in ahead of time? I have a the last four years, um, helped create a program called Light Like Life Dare Sport um, for the Ruse. And one of the things that I've always kind of hit a wall on is they're like, well, this doesn't pertain to me because they're still in their sport mm-hmm. at the time. And then yeah. it's like six months a year. Has there been a way that you've been able to get them invested before they've left their sport? Um, I think, well, one, I think when, you know, when we started doing these programming the programming, we started with men and women, and it was always easier to get women to see the bigger picture. And I think part of it is like a lot of them knew that they weren't going to play professionally, and so it, it was just an easier sell because they, they, could, they could really um, come to terms with the fact that they um, um, that this was going to end. Um, so I really haven't and, and now that we're working with just women, I really haven't had that be an issue. They, um, you know, I always start the conversation with what we're talking about is going to be valuable to you whenever you decide to put it into effect. If, if we walk through this exercise and, and you decide, oh, well, I'm still going to be an athlete for X number of years. Or I'm still going to go play professionally. That's totally fine. But there will come a time when you're going to want to pick this up. So pay attention for now um, and know that you sort of have it in your back pocket, even if it's not something that um, you're interested in focusing on now. Um, And I, yeah, I haven't really gotten pushback on that. Love it. So kind of framing it like, okay, you know, just plant the seed and then you can come back to it when you're ready. (laughs) Exactly. Yep. Well, great. So within your organizations, it sounds like beyond the game, um, heading to more like college campuses. Um, What about the the gladiators? What are you guys currently working on? So we have two pretty big projects coming on. So people who are, you know, West Coast based, we're actually um, going to post an event with NASCAR, which is going to be pretty dope. (laughs) Yeah. And that's in November, um, at the NASCAR event that's in Phoenix. Um, so we'll be making an announcement about that soon. And then, um, for the East coast, we'll be doing the bringing back the gladiators, excuse me, gladiators summit, um, which is like a day long experience where we have workshops, uh, panel discussions, um, a keynote address, a mixer, all designed to um, connect women in the industry, give them, give women in the industry like tangible tools to take back home, to um, change where they are, um, change the communities they're in, and to really just have a good time, you know, getting to know one another. I, I'm like a firm believer in networking no and the power of your network. So um, all of our events kind of have that aspect to it. Like, you you know, you're here to learn, but you're also here to meet other people because you can change somebody's life and they can change your life. So, yeah, those are the big things that are going on for gladiators. Um, and those, those are both fun those happening. With- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're taking a lot of work, but we're super excited about them. Will they ever head to the Midwest? Yes, yes, yes. So the summit actually follows the Super Bowl. So wherever the Super Bowl goes, that's where the summit will go. Yeah. And then um, we are, our goal is to start bringing our mixer series to different parts of the country. Um, We're really, obviously our target audiences or markets, I should say, are places that, you know, have sports as a, um, you know, already have sports established in the in the community. So places that have professional teams, places that have, you know, big college teams. Um, so yeah, we're we're definitely making our way out to the Midwest. But if people can't come to our events, they should definitely stay locked in um, on the blog. Um, 
keep up, we just um, restarted our Working Women Wednesday series, which, you know, just provides, um, you know, tools on YouTube to um, for, for women to develop themselves personally and professionally. And I just actually uh, became a contributing writer for Forbes.com. Oh, wow. So Congratulations. Yeah, there'll be, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I um, posted my first article on, what's today? Wednesday? So yep. on Monday. Um, but yeah, there, there's lots of ways for people to stay connected and get information, even if they can't make it to an event. Okay. Well, Kansas City finally got a Super Bowl, so I will find a way to come know. meet you then. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, great. Well, tell us in all your busy endeavors, how do you live out the fit philosophy trying to balance performance, health, intellect, and taking a few minutes for self? Yeah, it, it's a lot. And I actually, <laughs> I make sure for me, it's important that I take those few minutes for myself in the morning before anything else happens in my life. I am um, really big on um, just making time to pray and to meditate um, first thing in the morning. And then um, I try to work out right after that so that I'm, you know, try to stay healthy and I, because I, you know, especially as an athlete, a large part of how we function, I think, is just being um, being active. I think that uh, uh, if you'd ask a lot of former athletes, you know, they there's something missing if they're not if they're not, um, you know, getting the opportunity to be physically active. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's about trying to schedule everything these days. I, I literally was just having a conversation with somebody who was asking me, you know, well, how do you balance it all? And it's a juggling act. Um, it's, it's learning to just focus on one thing at one time um, and really working to do that one thing very well and then hopping to the next. So that, um, you know, you're not missing things. You're being engaged. You need to be engaged. Um, yeah, so I, that's it. I, I make time for me and God first, then working out, and then everything else sort of falls in play. Yeah, this whole myth of that we can multitask is really that we just do a whole bunch of stuff really quickly and disorganized. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on, and we'll be sure to put all these links in our show notes so that they can um, be able to access that. And then hopefully I'll get to meet you in person in a couple of years in Kansas City. Yes, definitely, for sure. Thank you guys so much for um, having me on and for creating this amazing platform. Well, thank you, and you have a great rest of your day. All right, you too. Bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Yours Truly. I'm excited to announce the releasing of my book, Finding Your Sweet Spot in Sport, Avoiding Relative Energy Deficit in Sport, also known as Red S, by optimizing your energy balance. Be sure to follow me on social media or go to my website, www.beccamacomble.com, to find out when the release date is set and when it'll be on Amazon. Bye, queens. For additional information on today's topic and guests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Fit for a Queen. And Hashtag don't, Fit for a Queen. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. We can't wait for you to join us next time on Fit for a Queen. Bye, queens.